with faith in Jesus Christ, we receive the body of our sister Ale de Vere for burial. Our sister was washed in holy baptism and anointed with the Holy Spirit. Let us therefore, with confidence, pray to God, our Heavenly Father, the giver of life, that he will raise her to perfection in the company of the saints. The Lord be with you. Let us pray. O God of grace and glory, we remember before you this day our sister Arlette. We thank you for giving her to us, her family and friends, to know and love as a companion on our earthly pilgrimage. In your boundless compassion, console us who mourn. Give us faith to see in death the gate of eternal life, so that in quiet confidence we may continue our course on earth until by your call we are reunited with those who have gone before. To Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Jesus said, I am the resurrection and I am the life. He who believes in me, though he die, yet shall he live. And whoever lives and believes in me shall never die. The steadfast love of the Lord never ceases. His compassion never fails. Every morning they are renewed. Jesus said, Let not your hearts be troubled. Believe in God. Believe also in me. I am sure that neither death, nor life, nor angels, nor principalities, nor powers, nor things present, nor things to come, nor height, nor death, nor anything else in all creation will be able to separate us from the love of God in Christ Jesus our Lord. If we live, we live to the Lord, and if we die, we die to the Lord. So then, whether we live or whether we die, we are the Lord's. For to this end, Christ died and lived again, that he might be Lord both of the dead and of the living. We brought nothing into the world and we take nothing out. The Lord gives and the Lord takes away. Blessed be the name of the Lord. The eternal God is our refuge and underneath are the everlasting arms. On behalf of the Bishop family, I welcome you to this service of praise and thanksgiving, celebrating the life of Arlette Devere Bishop. I invite you to bow your heads in prayer. Almighty God, we remember before you today your servant Arlette. And we pray that having opened to her the gates of larger life, you will receive her more and more into your joyful service, that with all who have served you in the past, she may share in the eternal victory of Jesus Christ, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. Please stand as we sing the opening song Opening him 427, 427. Please stand.
Please sit, and we now have the tribute. It's sung by Destiny Eiffel. You don't have to worry, and don't you be afraid. Joy comes in the morning, troubles they don't last always. For there's a friend in Jesus who will wipe your tears away. And if your heart is broken, just lift your hands and say, I know that I can make it. I know that I can stand. No matter what may come my way, my life is in your hand. You don't have to worry. And don't you be afraid. Joy comes in the morning. Troubles, they don't last always. For there's a friend in Jesus who will wipe your tears away. And if your heart is broken, just lift your hands and say, I know that I can make it. I know that I can stand. No matter what may come my way, my life is in your hands. With Jesus, I can take it. With him. tests and trials, they seem to get you down, and all your friends and loved ones are nowhere to be found. Remember there's a friend in Jesus who will wipe your tears away. And if your heart is broken, just lift your hands and say, I know that I can make it, I know that I can stand, no matter what may come my way, my life is in your hands. With Jesus. Thank you, Destiny. Now I invite Orlean to read the first lesson for us. First lesson. The Bible reading is taken from Job chapter 19, reading from verses 21 to 27. Have pity on me. Have pity on me, all you my friends, for the hand of God has touched me. Why do you, like God, pursue me? 
never satisfied with my flesh. All that my words were written down, all that they were inscribed in a book, all that with an iron pen and with lead they were engraved on a rock forever. For I know that my Redeemer lives, and that he at the last and that at the last he shall stand upon the earth, and after my skin have been thus destroyed, then my flesh I shall see God, whom I shall see on my side, and my eyes shall behold, and not another. My heart faints within me. This is the word of the Lord. While the congregation remains seated, the choir will chant a 46th psalm. Good evening. The second Bible lesson is taken from John chapter 11, verses 21 to 27. Martha said to Jesus, Lord, if you had been here, my brother would not have died. But even now, I know that God will give you whatever you ask of him. Jesus said to her, your brother will rise again. Martha said to him, I know that he will rise again in the resurrection on the last day. Jesus said to her, I am the resurrection and the life. Those who believe in me, even though they die, will live. And everyone who believes, who lives and believes in him, will never die. Do you believe this? She said to him, Yes, Lord, I believe that you are the Messiah, the Son of God, the one coming into the world. 
This is the Gospel of Christ. Here ends this evening's reading. The hymn before the address, 564, Will Your Anchor Home. Let us pray. May the words of my mouth and the meditation of our hearts be always acceptable in your sight, O Lord, our strength and our Redeemer. Amen. Please sit. Words from the Gospel of John, read by Susan for us this evening. Jesus said, I am the resurrection and I am life. Today we celebrate the life of Arlette de Vere Bishop. And as we celebrate her life, as we remember her with great love, the story of the raising of Lazarus in St. John's Gospel can guide us. It is one of the most insightful understandings of resurrection in the entire New Testament. It moves us along from seeing resurrection as just an experience of Jesus or an experience beyond death to seeing it as an experience in this life for those who believe in this resurrection, in Jesus. So in this story of St. John, part of which was read for a second reading, that story about the two sisters that call Jesus when their brother Lazarus died, St. John holds together life and death and resurrection in the same package called faith. 
There was a time when there was a need to connect resurrection to life, life after death with life today. Here and now, in a different way. So in our text, Jesus is saying, I am resurrection and I am life. Life and resurrection are blended together and Jesus becomes both at one and the same time. Resurrection is integrated into life now. So in this wonderful story that is a reflection on the Christian belief in this basic building block we call faith, we can have hope this evening, even though we might be sad. And here we are dealing with what St. John and indeed for the church, what was for St. John and indeed for the church, is surely one of the most important bits of Christian teaching, the hope that we have in the resurrection or life after death. It is a bit that tries and tries very hard not to divide life. The Christian life cannot be divided between the experiences of what happens now and what happens later. It cannot be separate and disconnected sections Jesus is resurrection and Jesus is life. It is in a context of death and at one and the same time a context of life. No tension here because the present and future are together. Indeed, it is all present in some sense. Jesus alive and in the present and Jesus is resurrection therefore and life at one and the same time. I am resurrection, I am life. And what I think is a very radical way St. John is trying to teach his Christian group, his congregation then, as he's trying to teach us in the church today, that resurrection is never to be relegated to or locked into a phase beyond time. The Christian life, he suggests, can be full of resurrection experiences. That, in fact, the Christian should be the source of resurrection experiences in this world, even as Jesus is such an experience of Martha and Mary in the story of Mary, Martha, and their brother Lazarus. So as we gather to lay our let to, to rest as a beloved and devoted wife, mother, grandmother, beloved, relative, and friend, a devout Christian, we are guided by St. John's integration of life and resurrection. It speaks to us forcefully this evening about faith. Her life and ministry constituted a package of lessons that can teach us that there can be resurrection experiences in this life. There can be experiences that can lead us to better understand what it means to be a Christian Indeed, a better understanding of what it means to be human. Her life and ministry were full of lessons about how we can be resurrection experiences for others, even as Jesus was for the two sisters, Mary and Martha. For Mary's comment, I know that he will rise again in the resurrection on the last day, a comment that speaks of resurrection in the future tense, leads Jesus to bring it back into the present. Jesus speaks of resurrection in the present tense. Jesus said to her, I am resurrection and I am life. Present tense. No room here to escape into the future. St. John here emphasizes that as Christians, we do not simply talk about resurrection. We do not only believe it. We do not await it. We live in it here and now. We do not propel it into the distant future. We live it now. Now that we are here this evening touched by our last death, there is a need for hope. And we often search for experiences of life, especially experiences in the life of our daily loved ones that can help us to cope better with their death. It is a natural thing to do. It is a natural search for hope. Alette seemed to embody that hope. She did not want Ralph to take care of her any longer. We know that he did not mind. 
She did not want her foot amputated. She wanted the family to be around Ralph. She was a woman of faith that anchored her hope in the one who is resurrection and life. As Christians, we all come to death, not with a pompous display of our achievements, but we come to death in search of the grace and forgiveness of God. For in the end, it depends not so much on what we have done, but what God can do for us and through us. I was told that she was a seamstress. So right on top of her coffin this evening, we see evidence of a reef on a machine. Reminding us of the importance of mending relationships as we continue to experience resurrection now in this life. We will miss her. Ralph and her children and grandchildren, we thank you for sharing her with us. As we prepare to lay our let to rest in the shadows of this church, we thank God for her life and her witness. We thank God because for us, Jesus is resurrection and Jesus is life. Please stand as we continue with the Apostles' Creed found in your program, found on page five. Together we say, I believe in God, the Father Almighty. Continue with our prayers. Please kneel or sit. Jesus Christ, we commend to you our sister Arlette, who was reborn by water and the Spirit in holy baptism. Grant that her death may recall to us your victory over death and be an occasion for us to renew our trust in your Father's love. Give us, we pray, the faith to follow where you have led the way and where you live and reign with the Father and the Holy Spirit to the ages of ages. Rest eternal grant to her, O Lord, and let light perpetual shine upon her. The hymn before the commendation is on page six, Blessed Assurance, Jesus is Mine. Please stand.
life everlasting. Yet, even at the grave, we make our song, Alleluia, Alleluia, Alleluia. Give rest, O Christ, to your servant with your saints. Where sorrow and pain are no more, neither sighing, but life everlasting. Lord, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Our Father. Who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name, thy kingdom come. Thy will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, power, and forever and ever. Amen. Let us commend our sister Arlette to the mercy of God, our maker and redeemer. Deliver your servant Arlette, our sovereign Lord Christ, from all evil, and set her free from every bond, that she may rest with all your saints in the eternal habitations, where with the Father and the Holy Spirit you live and reign, one God forever and ever. Amen. Amen. Into your hands, O merciful Savior, we commend your servant Arlet. Acknowledge, we humbly beseech you, a sheep of your own fold, a lamb of your own flock, a sinner of your own redeeming. Receive her into the arms of your mercy, in the blessed rest of everlasting peace, and into the glorious company of the saints in light. Amen. Amen. Let us go forth in the name of Christ. Thanks be to God. On behalf of the pa parish family of St. Leonard, Alet and Ralph's parish family, I'd like to again offer condolences to the family, particularly to Ralph, the children, the grandchildren, all those who are here and those who are online. We pray that this, opportunity, this bereavement period will be a time to, of comfort and support and that the belief in the resurrection will continue to give you that hope. I just want to add that the bring court Dolores is also, of course, from the dean who offered the commendation of her body to God and, of course, who served here with Arlette for a long period of time and here this evening to support the family. We also bring condolences from the pastoral carers represented by Marguerite Fenty and Emerson Smith, who visited Arlette on many occasions and remember her in prayer during the pandemic when they couldn't visit. So again, on behalf of the parish family, Dean, Ditson, Dean Gibson and the pastoral carers, we offer condolences and we remember all of you in prayer during this time. Our closing hymn, recessional hymn 387.
Christ. Christ will open the kingdom of heaven to all who believe in his name, saying, Come, O blessed of my Father, inherit the kingdom prepared for you. Into paradise may the angels lead you.
The Lord be with you. Jesus said, everyone the Father gives to me will come to me. I will never turn away anyone who believes in me. He who raised Jesus Christ from the dead will also give new life to our mortal bodies through his indwelling spirit. My heart, therefore, is glad, and my spirit rejoices. My body also shall rest in hope. You will show me the path of life. In your presence there is fullness of joy, and in your right hand are pleasures forevermore. I heard a voice from heaven saying, Write this, Happy are the dead who die in the faith of Christ. Henceforth, says the Spirit, they may rest from their labors for they take with them the record of their deeds. In the midst of life, we are in death. To whom can we turn for help but to you, Lord, who, is, who are justly angered by our sins? In sure and certain hope of resurrection to eternal life through our Lord Jesus Christ, we commend to Almighty God our sister Arlette de Vere, and we commit her body to the ground, earth to earth, ashes to ashes, dust to dust. And we beseech you in your infinite goodness to give us grace to live in your dear love and to die in your favor, that when your well-beloved son shall come again in judgment, both this, our sister Arlette, and we ourselves may be found acceptable in your sight. Grant this for the sake of your son, Jesus Christ, our Lord. The Lord be with you. Grant, O Lord, to all who are bereaved the spirit of faith and courage, that they may have strength to meet the days to come with steadfastness and patience, not sowing with those without hope, but in thankful remembrance of your great goodness and in the joyful expectation of eternal life with those they love. This we ask in the name of Jesus Christ, O Lord. Amen. Rest eternal grant to her, O Lord, and let light perpetual shine upon her. Or open our hymn, Bend the Trumpet of the Lord.
The Lord be with you. Let us pray. Remember, O oh Lord, this your servant, Arlet, who has gone before us with the sign of faith and now rests in the sleep of peace. According to your promises, grant to her and to all who rest in Christ refreshment, light, and peace. The Lord bless her and keep her. The Lord make his face to shine upon her and be gracious to her. The Lord lift up his light upon her and give her peace now and always. Amen. Rest eternal grant to her, O Lord, and let light perpetual shine upon her. May she rest in peace and rise in glory. Amen. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord lift his countenance upon you.